Let me ask you a question, should I play Terra in Victor? And while you think about your answer, allow me to rant about what happened during the first 45 minutes of me playing Terra in Victor, in which my mind was blown. I want to talk about the various mind-blowing things I encountered in the game, and just generally about this game and my first impressions of it, because it might be slightly amusing, and perhaps get to a point where I explain why I'm so hesitant to play it more, even though I thought it was a mind-blowing experience just basically seeing the tutorial. So the first thing that I did in the game was look at the patch notes, as we saw, and I was put off, I suppose, by the fact the version number in this game is really low, and it's had over 100 versions of 0.3 over the last year. So whatever they're trying to do, they're making a lot of changes to the game, but it's not moving it towards being finished, I suppose. They're sticking at their current, it's very unfinished commitment. I don't know what that means. It is an early access game. Once again, I've been tricked into playing an early access game which means they are incentivized to pretend the version number's lower than it really is to some extent. I don't know how finished this game is or what it's supposed to be. Apparently, it's nothing like what it's supposed to be because it's such a low version number. But I'm coming at this from the commercial software version number perspective of an old software developer. In games, the version number can just mean absolutely anything, so 0.3 might be as good as done. Well, anyway, the game starts with a cutscene explaining that some aliens fell to Earth. A cutscene where actually the subtitles aren't synced up with the voice acting, which is absolutely infuriating. I don't know if that's a bug that like, just happened to me. It's very noticeable. At least I was very annoyed by it. Also, the game crashed the first time I hit new games. I was having a really bad experience just getting into the game. Well, anyway... What I didn't know is what I was getting into. People had told me to look at Terra Invicta because it sounded like something I'd talked about when I was talking about how I wanted Xenonauts to be different, I think, or some kind of good XCOM game. They're like, oh, you should play Terra Invicta. And that's why it ended up installed, and that's why I ended up clicking on it one day when I didn't have anything to play. And that's why I ended up looking at this screen. And this is about as far as I got in Terra Invicta. We're literally just going to talk about this <laughs> for the rest of the video and various random things about the game that took me by surprise and intrigued me so much, but so much that I thought, surely I can't even play this game. It's too good, that sort of thing. Well, what actually is the game? I thought it was going to be something like XCOM, like a grid-based, turn-based shooter or something like that. It's much more like Crusader Kings 2. Once again, I've been tricked into playing Crusader Kings 2 as well. You control a group of a couple of people, like five or something, and you send these characters to do things on the map, like in Crusader Kings, and this will have various effects, and you're going to try and make something happen overall. The thing you want to do in the tutorial campaign is stop the aliens invading, but I understand that you could play as other quote-unquote factions who maybe want to work with the aliens, so... This is technically a 4X game, the game itself claims, and the factions in the 4X sense are the different Illuminatis, you could say, that are all working to do something on the world map. Well, it's not even just the world map, as we'll see. Well, my initial experience with the game is reading. We've got a whole lot of stuff to read before we can get started, because the game's tutorial system is just to give you more tooltips than normal. So you go through reading tips about all the different things on the screen and maybe you'll remember a certain this amount of stuff. It's the kind of game that desperately here, actually needs a video tutorial. If they're not going to make a dedicated tutorial campaign where like you only play in one corner of the map and it tells you to do something to learn mechanics, it should be like, well, if you're just going to get thrown in, here's a video of what to do like in the first 10 minutes or something so you get an idea of what the game's even about because you have so many options for what to do in this game it would be very easy to be led astray. Luckily, the tutorial does tell you what to do for your first couple of missions, the first couple of actions to take in the game. And that's literally as far as I got, so I can't say anything else aside from that. So yes, what we're going to be doing, what we're supposed to be doing, is we're on Earth, each Earth nation is represented, and in the top left you can see a bunch of yellow circles. Those are the things you need to get, as far as I can tell. Like, you're the Illuminati, and it simulates your Illuminati actions by having you control circles within nations. So a circle might represent some aspect of that nation's power, and you can have it won over to your side. So it might be like the corporations in China, and your Illuminati action can be to ally the corporations of China to you. 
and that will give you something. You can see various numbers in the top left, like you're trying to gain resources from nations by doing these things. But it goes much further than that, I think. It looks like you can even take control of the government and start actively puppeteering nations to do certain things. So it's not like you are the organization that's fighting the aliens. It seems to be more like you're literally six people and you're trying to trick the world into fighting the aliens through underhanded techniques. How are you actually doing this? Well, that's an interesting question as well. Basically, the six people that you are are extremely powerful or influential or in some way can do something like take control of China's corporations over a period of two weeks. Like You just do something that somehow achieves that. Well, we'll look a tiny bit at that later. Let's get into having my mind blown a little bit. I was already in a partially blown state because I just didn't know what the game was going to be, so I was surprised to see it have this sort of strategy-like veneer. It looked like it was going to be a strategy game, but then it's actually about you controlling this small group of people doing subterfuge actions. But then we tilt more towards a grand strategy genre, something like Crusader Kings 2 or even like Victoria, where We've got a list of all the nations on Earth and tons of stats about them as well. I'm also checking out here the Alpine states as part of the EU. This is taking place in the modern day to the extent that somewhere it actually talks about the Russo-Ukrainian war being ongoing on, in the in-game universe. And you might want to actually do something about that because it might disrupt the alien invasion situation also going on. So that's an interesting thing about the game. There seems to be an infinite amount of stuff going on in the game. Like, what is this I'm looking at here? I can see to what extent Angola wants to surrender to the aliens, to what extent it wants to work with them. There are so many numbers, and you might be noting some of the tooltips that appear when we mouse over the numbers are gigantic. There's so much stuff happening. So I was just like, it's giving me so much information. What decisions am I supposed to be making in this game if this is the information it's giving me to make them? Shout out to Paraguay, who have the right idea. The aliens have been on Earth for about 0.1 seconds at this stage in the game, and 44% of them have already gone for submit to the aliens as their official policy. Well, that's probably a good idea. Most other countries are just like undecided, which is probably the right thing to do since we don't know anything. But if you're going to make a gamble about how to react to the aliens invading, just surrendering instantly, that's a really good gamble. Because, you know, if they got here, they can probably do whatever they goddamn want now that they are here. So, like, let's not bother fighting them. Unfortunately, my faction, the Resistance, wants to resist. Curiously, it's different to the destroy the aliens. There is another faction in the game, that's humanity first thing that's on the tooltips, that wants to destroy the aliens. I don't quite know how resist the aliens and destroy the aliens will turn out to be different, but I was curious to eventually find out at the very least. So yes, we've got all these nations. You can see there's a couple of dots next to their nation names. So those dots are what we're after. We want to control various aspects of various nations, preferably nations that do want to resist the aliens, or maybe we can change their public opinion to make them want to resist more. And they need to be nations that might actually be useful to our Illuminati cause. So, for example, nations that have spaceports in them, like the USA, would be useful if we're going to do some stuff in space to stop the aliens, that sort of thing. Or maybe nations with tons of cash will be useful, or nations that can deploy a lot of troops would be useful. Basically, I guess you just want some superpowers to be under the Illuminati's control. It's just going to cost you more number to get that, and maybe you won't. Looks like North Korea is extremely willing to surrender. For whatever reason, some countries have made up their mind. North Korea is not dealing with the alien invasion. Just surrender immediately. Looks like Greece, though, is very willing to work with the aliens. Ireland, as well, wants to ally to the aliens. Potentially also a good idea. I really don't think trying to fight them is a good idea. We should either surrender to them if they are violent, or just be friends with them if they're not. We've really jumped to conclusions by just deciding we're going to fight them the very second they show up. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm unimmersed because I don't want to resist the aliens. I'm too stressed just looking at the national stats. Carrying on the tour that the tutorial is taking me on, we reached the research screen, I think. I never came back to the research screen. I was confused because it was telling me to move on to another screen, and I only looked at it for like two seconds. I guess there's a tech tree. Here's the Intel screen, where we can see the other Illuminatis. So we are an Illuminati doing one thing. Here are some other Illuminatis we know about that are trying to get the, the nations to do something else. So there's Humanity first again. 
They just want to kill the aliens, with their <laughs> logo being a human hand with a line through it, which makes me think it's about killing humans as well. A little bit confusing there. I suppose one thing we might want to do in our mission is get Humanity First supporters to support our resistance instead, because it's basically the same thing. We're also going to be killing the aliens, I suppose. We've already decided to do that based on nothing at all. Now you might also note, we're in space now, so my mind is already just like out the window. I'm like, oh my god. If you just scroll the mouse wheel, it just keeps zooming out. You can zoom out to the entire solar system and like the outer rims of the solar system with all of the asteroids and stuff in like the Oort cloud. So I guess we have to stop the aliens out here as well. We've got our business on Earth trying to hassle cash out of governments and lobbying people to bother giving arms to the anti-alien force. We also have to go and mine asteroids or something. So that's probably where trying to get nations on your side that have space programs would be useful. But I'm just like, oh my god, I thought it was like XCOM. <laughs> What's going on? I think the link between this and XCOM is that it involves aliens, so it's got a, th a thematic link. And the guy or someone who worked on the Long War mod for XCOM 1, which is like a famous mod of the original remake of XCOM, worked on this as well. I think it's the same studio that made those two products. So there's some connection, but I guess we're not going to be firing an assault rifle at an alien anytime soon. I think we're trying to do something else. I eventually managed to order one of my two characters to go and look at the alien crash site. At least I think that's what I'm doing here. I'm getting Kerry Hooper to surveil Chiang Mai region in which the aliens are, so maybe they'll go and talk to them and find out some information, you know, maybe we'll find out that we shouldn't kill them or something, that would be nice. But I'm very distracted by this stuff on the left, there's so much simulation in the background. I'm like, if this game's about fighting aliens, why has it gone so damn hard on absolutely everything else? <laughs> like, there's so much mechanical depth and detail to what just Thailand is doing here, <laughs> to pick one random nation. It's simulating how democratic their government is and how that's changing over time to two decimal places of democracy-ness. And we have like tech level, civil unrest, GDP stats, military stuff, and then we have like their education stat. It's tracking that they have six point years average education for their citizens. And it really seems like that might matter <laughs> in some way. I guess part of the mind-blowing experience is that it's bothering to tell me at all. And just the implication that it's even bothering to tell me that. It's like, oh, that's important, is it? I have to worry about how many years education the Thai citizens get. I guess I could do something about that. Maybe I can take control of Thailand as the Illuminati, make Thailand better educated, and we'll stop the aliens. Like, I, I guess you can do some strategy using that. We also have to worry about cohesion, where it has this extremely, like, political science simulation going on in the background about how unified behind particular culture or goals each nation state is, with an added bonus if they're not especially unified to simulate the marketplace of ideas. If your people don't necessarily like each other, you might get more innovation as they argue with each other or something like that's going on in the background and it's doing that separately for every single nation on earth like i can see these mechanics and just think you could simplify this a million times but it's not even close it's going as complicated as it possibly can it seems and i like the the promise that comes with this that you can actually use this in a strategy you could actually be like you know what we're gonna go down to the philippines and do something really specific as part of my gigantic plan to stop the aliens we need filipinos to be slightly better educated for my plan to work it's all gonna come together and it actually allows you to bother influencing those stats so we've also got GDP, we've got inequality here. We have to deal with the fact that there's class issues going on in the world. It looks like we might have to step in and force countries to implement welfare policies to make the country less unequal because being unequal destroys your cohesion and at low cohesion you get unrest and rebellions and that's another stat that goes up. So essentially you want everybody to be somewhat happy with their situation so that you can get them to fight the aliens or something. There's just so much stuff that's being made my responsibility as the player, or in, implicitly is being made my responsibility by the fact the game is telling me it. And even in the tutorial, being like, right, 
income inequality. That's the next thing to worry about. We haven't even seen an alien. Like, nothing has happened in the game. And it's telling me to worry about the income inequality in Thailand. And I'm like, oh my god. How much do I have to think about <laughs> to play this game? My mind is out of here. And then it hits you with this as well. You thought you were done looking through the, the stats menu and it's like, did you know there's another stats menu? You can bring up another one and there's all kinds of things in here with all this tiny text tooltips. I think what you can do is like use this menu to change what policies the government is doing. So I might want to make them focus on economy if I had the control here. And it's telling me if I invest in the economy, we can get $7.1 added to GDP, although inequality will go up by 0.00015%. Six decimal places was that, or five? I can't count and I don't want to count. That's insanely detailed. And anyway, there's more stuff going on. We could persuade these nations to do various things. And again, it's both daunting, overwhelmingly complicated, but there's so much potential there. I think I would love to actually use this system. And here was where, like, if my mind was blown before, here a nuclear bomb went off in my head. There's this warning here that the spoils stat in Thailand is too low. This being something like how exploitative the economy is, the amount of money that's being removed from the economy by, like, the bourgeoisie or something like that, they're angry because they're not being allowed to remove enough. There needs to be more like pollution and labour exploitation or something as it says there, to make the elites feel like they're getting whatever it is they want. But if you do this, inequality goes up by some four decimal place number, it decreases how democratic society is, and it increases the global greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, it says there. And I was like, wait, what? I have to worry about that as well? Literally, they just put everything into this game. You have to deal with the Russo-Ukrainian war. You have to deal with climate change. You have to deal with income inequality. You have to deal with the goddamn bourgeoisie extracting wealth from the economy and putting it into offshore bank accounts. And... I guess aliens are going to invade at some point too, so you better work out how space mining works or something. We need more than two people working on this, guys. Our little resistance organization is very small right now if we're going to be doing all of this. And look at these stats here. You don't just have to deal with climate change, you get the details. You can switch between having CO2 and methane and nitrous oxide. You can probably do something here where you geoengineer the climate and try to get a really high albedo gas into the air or something to reverse climate change while you fight the aliens. It feels like that's where the game is going, but what even is all this? And what is what is all this? <laughs> something else just showed up. I accidentally clicked on something in Terra Invicta and 1000 gigabytes of information was then provided to me. And again, it's like, oh, you're telling me this. That's daunting. I need to know this for something? Was I supposed to read this? <laughs> what is this? 29% something on 30 Urania, a rock in the asteroid belt, looks like we might want to do something about that, I guess. And I was just completely overwhelmed. So I feel like the fact that it has this information promises so much. There's probably so much strategy in here, so much depth. But I feel like you'd have to do so much work to get to the point when you could even slightly appreciate it. It's just completely wasted on me right now as a new player looking at this, just being like, oh my god. Like it bothers to have like the Trojan orbit point. So I remember this from studying astronomy in university. This is amazing. I would love to actually use that information to do something in a strategy. But right now, I'm just completely obliterated. Like, I can't launch a rocket. It will produce too much CO2 and then we'll die for a separate reason. Like, what am I supposed to do with all of this information I've been given? And that's just Thailand. That's just Earth. There's a lot more I haven't clicked on here. If I was to consider anything except just Thailand right now, information about it would multiply how mind blown I am by 160 or however many nation states there are on the map. Here I am actually considering doing something. I was trying to work out what to do with this activist we have for their mission. I think every couple of weeks each Illuminati member does something and the game is effectively picking what they're going to do. I eventually found that I could potentially take control of the aristocracy of the Himalayan states with an 87% chance of it working. 
What does that even mean? <laughs> I don't know, and I don't know how I know the percent chance of it working either. I have some influence currency, I can spend some something to make it 97% chance of working as well, so we can really pressure the aristocracy of the Himalayan states, which I guess is like Nepal and Bhutan, to fight the aliens for us. It'll be just them at first, but you know, they're seemingly on board with it, there seems to be a good chance of it working. Do we actually want the Himalayan states to be helping our organization? Well, I don't know. It looks like they're peaceful, they're in the atomic age, which is nice. They've got some education, they're a little bit polarized. They've got moderate income inequality. Is that going to be a problem? I don't know. They're an anocracy as their government type with 4.4 democracy points. I don't know what anocracy means. I think it might just mean the aristocracy has a lot of control over the democracy, so it's not very democratic. Something like that. I don't know. I've never heard of that word before seeing this game, and I'm like somebody who reads history scripts about governments constantly. So we've got something brand new happening right here in this brand new game. Looks like the Himalayan states also has the bourgeoisie problem where they're not happy enough as well, they're not getting enough out of the economy, and I guess if I give them what they want then I'll get less out of the economy and maybe aliens will kill us all. Maybe we have to do away with the bourgeoisie. That That's the only solution to all of life's problems once again and it's coming up in Terra Invicta for some reason. I don't know what I'm doing, but looks like I eventually committed to taking that 90% chance for the Himalayan state's aristocracy to support us in some way. <laughs> Maybe that will help. I think they'll give me some money or something by the looks of those stats on the left. Actually, no, it says zero. I guess they'll give us some research, it looks like, as well. Okay, we're going to get some Himalayan aristocrats to research ways to stop the aliens. Is that a good strategy? Well, it's what we've gone for here, and it's one of the 50 billion possible strategies we could have gone for for our opening move in Terra Invicta. And that was the end of my Terra Invicta experience, because I was so obliterated by just reading the tooltips and going through all of this over the course of about an hour, that I just thought, woof, I can't possibly play this, can I? And I actually ended up looking at the Steam store, because I was like, what genre of game even is this? It claims there to be strategy, grand strategy, 4x, well it's certainly something like that, but it's unlike anything I've ever seen by being a combination of all the things I've ever seen. <laughs> so it's just everything. One of the tags was simulation, and I think that's probably the best way of putting it. They've simulated Earth politics, and also the aliens will invade. Deal with both, <laughs> if you can, I suppose. I ended up reading the reviews because it actually had tons of bad reviews and I was like, well this is a bit off-putting as well, combined with a very low version number. It made me think, should I just leave this game and come back to it another time perhaps, because maybe I'm getting into trouble here <laughs> attempting to play this game. Well that's part of the question I asked you at the beginning, should I play Terra Invicta? And somebody here in the reviews was writing on this topic as well. It seems that apparently the reason it's so badly reviewed is because it defies expectations so much. Too many people play it and don't like it at first and feel disappointed by it. But the people who do play it quite a lot seem to like it a decent amount. So it's got that cult classic vibe going on. Although I must say that I read quite a lot of the good reviews, the positive reviews, and a lot of them were the kind of positive review where it complains about the game the whole time. Which obviously, that's my style of review right here. I'm fine with a positive review that it contains exclusively negative feedback. But it just made me think that even the people who like it quite a lot have plenty they're frustrated with about it, which might explain why it's had over 100 0.3 versions over the last year, stuff still being changed about it. Well, I don't really know what's going on. I suppose the thing that put me off a bit more was that reading the reviews revealed somewhere from somebody that this game's extremely long, and I also checked out the achievements and noted that nobody's finished this game. I'm also playing Demon Souls on the PS5 right now. Way more people have done way more of Demon Souls, a game famous for being like repulsive to new players and difficult to get into, than have played Terra Invicta. But the promise of Terra Invicta seems so cool. I can kind of see what people are talking about when they're explaining the weird scenarios that they went through in their positive reviews. Saying like, I did all these crazy things and it somehow worked out. But at the same time, people are like, while it's really good, it's also really boring and it takes a long time, that sort of thing. Well, I don't know. You, you there in the comments, tell me something about Terra Invicta that will make me make up my mind on this topic right now. And that's it for this rant about Terra Invicta. That's what happened to me yesterday. 
mind equals blown, that might have been the best game I've ever seen, but I came away not wanting to play it. <laughs> so try and reconcile those first impressions for me if you can. Thanks for watching.